All right, now without further ado, let's go ahead and get on to the history of Leeds. And I do, this is in conjunction, of course, with our exhibit on the, the history of Leeds High School. Uh, and I do want to thank the uh, Judy Simone and the, the Leeds High School Reunion Committee who very generously uh, donated uh, their, their the, the great collection of memorabilia that a lot of it that you see on, in, the, in the exhibit. And that was just a, a wonderful donation that has then sparked other donations. And so we now have a complete run of the Leeds High School yearbooks and things you know just things that we didn't have before and that was that was something we were hoping might happen by doing that exhibit and so uh, it's uh, uh, it, we're, we're really glad to do that uh, and so today we're going to since we have a, a, an exhibit that focuses on Leeds High School specifically we're going to do an overview of the history of Leeds itself as, as a neighborhood of Sioux City uh, and uh, we haven't I have done this but it's I think it was in 2012 so like the second year we were we were open here uh, we did this and so I think it was about time that we did another overview of Leeds history. So Leeds, uh, as you probably know, uh, Leeds is probably, I, I would argue Leeds has the, uh, the, the strongest neighborhood identity in Sioux City, or certainly it's up there. It's challenged by Riverside uh, and possibly Greenville, uh, and, and there are all other, uh, other uh, candidates, but uh, Leeds has always had a very strong identity as, as, as its own area of Sioux City. And Part of the reason for that uh, is, is the way that it developed in, in its very beginning. Uh, and it, really, the history of Leeds, the story of Leeds goes back, I would say, to uh, John and Elizabeth Treadway. And they were the first people that lived in the area where Leeds now is. Uh, in, the, in the late 1870s, uh, the Treadways bought a, a large farm, so many hundreds of acres in, in what today is Leeds. Uh, and tr the Treadways were known for, they were cattle breeders, and they were known for uh, breeding high quality uh, stock cattle. Uh, and so th that's kind of where they made their fortune. Uh, but, uh, and so we have a picture of John and Elizabeth in, in their older days. But in 1881, they built a, a fairly large residence uh, uh, at the corner of what today is, is uh, Outer Drive and, and Floyd Boulevard. Uh, at the, it'd, be the north, uh, it'd be the northeast corner. Uh, and so what we, what we would later know, know as Elmwood. Now, at the end of the 1880s, Sioux City was undergoing its most rapid period of expansion. It, it had grown very rapidly throughout the, 19, or the 1880s. Uh, and right at the end of the decade, it, it really, it, the growth and the development really peaked. Uh, and at that point, Sioux City was expanding so rapidly that the city council uh, expanded the city limits from the, in, in 1880, in, in around 1888, uh, the, the, if you were, went back to 1888, the northern city limits of, of Sioux City would have been at about 18th Street. Uh, and in 1890, the city council extended the, the northern city limits all the way to the Plymouth County border. They also extended it east quite a ways from where it had been, and then all the way south to what today is approximately the Singing Hills area. And so Sioux City went from being a, a, a city that was capable of accommodating a, a, a population of you know around 10,000 people or so, uh, to being a, a city with 50 square miles of, of territory and, and presumably could uh, accommodate a population of about 250,000 people. Uh, and so it, it was a very gr aggressive time of, of, uh, of development and, and Leeds was a big component of that. Now, Leeds got its start with the Leeds Land and Improvement Company and it was led by some names that will be familiar to you. Arthur Gerritsen, William Gordon, Daniel T. Hedges, these guys were all, they were involved in founding uh, Morningside, in Riverside, they were involved in the Sioux City Stockyards Company and many other businesses uh, around Sioux City. Uh, and so they, they, they were what we call the boomers today. They were, they were uh, land speculators and businessmen that uh, that were kind of leading the development of Sioux City at that time. Well, in, in 1888, they purchased the land where Leeds eventually was, uh, was uh, developed uh, from John Treadway, John and Elizabeth Treadway. Uh, and so Leeds is very unique in Sioux City, and it's the one area of town that is part of, inside Sioux City city limits that was its own town for a pro, for exactly about one year, and so so maybe that that is part of its independent uh, uh, in, independent uh, view of itself is because uh, it, it actually was not always just a suburb of Sioux City; it, it, was, it was its own little town, uh, but. Quite quickly, within, in 1890, when those city limits were expanded, the, the residents, such as they were in Leeds at that time, voted to become part of Sioux City, and it was annexed into to Sioux City proper. 
Now, the, the original view of, or the, the vision of the leaders of the Leeds Land and Improvement Company was that Leeds would be an industrial suburb. So it would be a place where workers and business uh, leaders would live uh, in the same area. And there, it would be based on heavy industry that was located along the railroad lines that ran past the, the, the development itself. Uh, and so, and then an, another unique, it was called Leeds, which is a, a major uh, city in, in England. Uh, and so, Initially, it had north-south streets that were named after U.S. presidents, and then it, what today are numbered streets were originally named after cities in England. And so there was a Birmingham and a Manchester, and uh, and, and they had all you know very much English-related names early on until 1911, when a lot of the streets in Sioux City were renamed, uh, and then they they were just made numbered streets at that point. But this kind of gives you a, a, an overview of what the uh, layout of Leeds would be with the, the, the residence part on the west side of the, the railroad tracks and of what today is Floyd Boulevard, and then the various uh, industries that would be on the east side of, of those tracks. Now, one of the big early businesses in Leeds was the Sioux City Engine and Iron Works, and it was uh, managed by Charles Giddings, uh, and it was located where American Popcorn Company is today. Uh, so north of 41st Street and, and uh, east of, of Floyd Boulevard. And the, the engine and ironworks had been around earlier. It had originally been over on, on the West 7th Street area. Uh, and, but it, they specialized in producing Coralist steam engines, so big stationary steam engines that were used to run equipment in, in various manufacturing concerns. And the, the, it, the, uh, the buildings are being built in this picture, and I am almost certain that this picture was taken from atop the smokestack of what we'll see later was the bon Bonus Milner Mill uh, that, that was also in Leeds. And so I'm pretty sure that's how the photographer got so high in the air uh, and drug his, his uh, camera to the top of that smokestack. Here's a, a picture of the inside of the, of the engine and ironworks, and you can see all the heavy equipment that was in there. And so this was a big, big industry, it probably employed at its peak uh, two or 300 uh, workers and uh, was, was a major uh, Sioux City business. Now, the, the biggest, and actually one of the biggest uh, industrial concerns Sioux City ever had was the Daniel Paris Stove Works. Uh, and this, sat, the, the, this company specialized in making big coal and wood burning stoves that were used in homes uh, but, and businesses, but also in things like streetcars. Uh, and uh, it, it made a whole host of products. Uh, it, along that line, but this facility was where the uh, where Magellan Pipeline is today, so south of 41st Street and east of, of Floyd uh, Boulevard, uh, and it was one of the largest structures that's ever been in Sioux It was something like 700 by 700 feet, so I mean it, it, was, it was a very big facility, and and, and at its height uh, it employed many hundreds of workers. Uh, and what was it? George Felt was the original manager of, of uh, Daniel Paris. I believe Daniel Paris, the, the parent company, was, uh, was headquartered in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, as I said before, the, the mill is the other uh, big, uh, big business in early Leeds. Uh, it was originally the Great Northern Mill, named after the Great Northern Railroad, uh, whose tracks ran by uh, the, the, the mill, uh, but fairly quickly became the Bonus Milner Mill. Uh, and then in, in 1895 became Mystic Milling Company, and then in, in 1920 was bought out by International Milling. And so, but uh, this is the site of where the uh, BWC terminal is today. So just to the east of, of, of American Popcorn and, and north of uh, 41st Street. And there you see the uh, smokestack that I believe the, the picture of the Sioux City Engine and Iron Works uh, was taken from. Uh, now we get into some of the, the structures inside early Leeds. Uh, one was Olivet Presbyterian Church, uh, and this was at the northeast corner of 44th and Central Str Street, and it is the location today of Calvary Lutheran Church. Uh, it is on, on this site today, but uh, uh, a wood frame structure. And then we had uh, Wesley Methodist Church, which still exists in Sioux City, but is now out on uh, Indian Hills Boulevard. Uh, but uh, it got its start at uh, the, the southeast corner of 43rd and Central Street uh, and uh, in, in this wood frame structure in, in 1892. 
Now, no sooner had Leeds gotten off, uh, gotten, uh, off to a good start than it was struck by a, by a devastating flood, the, the great uh, Floyd River flood of May 1892. Uh, and this was the first really disastrous uh, of a series of, of very bad uh, Floyd River floods in Sioux City's history. Uh, and this, this picture was taken south of Leeds. It was taken about where Cargill is today at 12th and, uh, uh, the kind of the north side of the Cargill uh, complex at, at 12th and Clark Streets looking to the north, kind of the northwest. And, and so these buildings you see up here, that was the Sioux City Seed and Nursery Company and it was at about 19th and Floyd Boulevard is what you're seeing. And then in the far distance, you can just barely see what became the, string, the Springdale uh, development uh, uh, to, to the north of that area. And here's a picture from the same spot at 12th and Clark Streets, uh, looking to the northeast across uh, the, the Floyd Valley. Uh, and and you, can see, you can see a little more of Springdale up in here, but you get a sense of just how terrible this flood was. It completely inundated the, uh, uh, the, the, Floyd, the whole Floyd Valley in Sioux City. Uh, in Leeds itself, uh, Daniel Paris Stove Works was submerged in water, and we see the, the damage there. And so the, the, the 1892 Floyd River flood was really the first really terrible natural disaster in Sioux City's history that really wreaked a lot of, a lot of havoc here. It not only destroyed a lot of uh, property in Leeds uh, and the rest of the Floyd Valley, it also destroyed things like the Union Stockyards Company and the Packing District. And it was just very, a very devastating setback to, to Sioux City. Something like 25 people were also killed in this flood. So after the flood, there was, there was recovery, but uh, uh, for instance, the, the Daniel Paris Stove Works really didn't last much longer than, than it made it into the early 18, or mid-1890s. Uh, the, the, uh, the Sioux City Engine and Iron Works pretty much folded up shop by the end of the 1890s. The 1890s were a real tough time in, in the, the American Midwest. They were, they were a depression era, uh, much like the 1930s. Not quite as bad as the 1930s, but they were fairly close in a lot of economic indicators. And uh, uh, in the agricultural sector, and in, in uh, some of the newer Midwestern towns really struggled through the 1890s. Uh, but in this picture, in, in 1895, uh, we have uh, George Siebens, who was a, an employee of the Pesh Manufacturing Company who specialized in well drilling equipment uh, and I believe still operate in Lamar's, or at least some branch of, of the company does. Uh, and uh, so he's next to some well drilling equipment. In the background, the, uh, the Daniel Paris Stove Works uh, building is still in existence. Uh, in the distance, uh, right back here, at number three is the Sioux City Northern uh, Railroad Depot. Uh, and number four, uh, back here, is the Illinois Central Depot, which is where the, approximately where the Dental Depot is today uh, off, of, off of Floyd Boulevard. Uh, so at that time, uh, Leeds had two passenger depots uh, along, along the railroad tracks. Here we have the way the, uh, the early Leeds Business distri District looked. And so we're, we're at the corner of uh, Floyd Boulevard and Tyler Street looking to the uh, northeast. And actually, a lot, of, a lot of these buildings still exist. They've been, the facades have been changed and such. But uh, a good portion of that block between, uh, uh, I guess it would be between Tyler Street and Polk Street uh, still, still exists. Early Sioux City business uh, was the Jonas Brothers uh, dry goods business or hardware business, uh, and it was run by the brothers uh, William Charles and Henry Jonas. Uh, Henry is is pictured uh, here. He was he was a young man who actually passed away uh, within about a year of this. Uh, of, of I'm sure not sure what the cause, but he was only about 31 years old. Uh, it was really the business was mostly I think uh, run by Charles. Uh, William was a minister up in Lamar's, uh, but I think. Uh, William and his wife Augusta were kind of the money people behind the, the Jonas store. And then we had uh, the Heath Livery and Feed Store, uh, and that was located at the southwest corner of 43rd and Polk Street. And we have Thomas and Mary Heath and their son David in the, in the picture with a, with a, a mule, probably. Uh, and uh, today this is the site of a, of a residence, but uh, so that was another early Leeds business. Of course, Hawthorne School, you had to have in a new uh, outlying area, Sioux City had to have a school. Uh, and so this is Hawthorne School at the northwest corner of 44th and Central Street. And this building is, is still there, uh, uh, at least until recently, it was the Helping Hands uh, um, preschool. Uh, now, it does not look anything like this today because of the 1930s. There was a major renovation uh, project that went on with Sioux City Schools, as we'll see later. Uh, but, but you can see it was one of the bigger elementary schools at that time. And, and Hawthorne had everything from first grade 
or maybe even kindergarten, uh, all the way up to eighth grade uh, would, have, would have gone to Hawthorne initially. So it was, it was a pretty good sized school. Here we have an early Hawthorne class. I'd say these are seventh or eighth graders. Uh, we know it's around 1900 because I see a picture of William McKinley on the, on the back wall. Uh, and so that's a great, I don't know exactly who the teacher is or anything, but uh, that, that's a great view of an early uh, Hawthorne school class. Probably, uh, yeah, you know, right around 1900. Now the, the first uh, Leeds Fire Station uh, was where the current, uh, well, the current what had been the Leeds Fire Station uh, at 4016 uh, Floyd Boulevard. Uh, it was built in 1892, uh, and so this was the, the, the first uh, uh, of the Leeds Fire Stations. Here we have another one of those pictures. We've got some more of the equipment that Pesh uh, Manufacturing uh, built, to some more well drilling equipment. This, this is a fun picture because it was taken about at the, the northern end of what today would be the, uh, the American Popcorn Company property, looking to the north toward where these houses are. It was a development called Lynn. Uh, and it, it was a short-lived uh, thing that, where there were just some houses, and, and oddly there was a boot factory in Lynn for a while. Uh, but uh, it was about where the Highway 75 intersection is with Floyd Boulevard is about where Lynn sat. And I believe quite a few of these houses were eventually moved into Leeds uh, and, and used as residents. And some of them are probably there, but I, I can't tell you which ones would be. Another long time uh, Leeds business was Sioux City Ra uh, Robe and Tanning Company. And so this was a, a, a fur manufacturing uh, business uh, that made things like buffalo hide robes and blankets and, and such. I believe the, uh, the uh, buffalo bison head that we have uh, in the Sioux City attic out here uh, was, the story was it was shot by Buffalo Bill Cody and left at the Sioux City Robe and Tanning Company. Uh, and uh, so good story anyway. Hopefully it's, it's, that's the story we were given with it. Uh, and so this sat uh, at uh, 4415 uh, 41st Street, and that's about where American Popcorn's microwave popcorn facility is today. And it was originally owned by Phil Diamond uh, and then was sold to uh, Wilson Rich uh, in, in uh, 1913. And the Rich family then ran it for many years after that. Now, Leeds had a brick company, as you'll find out in Tom's talk uh, in, in May, so we won't get too much into it, but there's some great photos here of the Leeds brickyards. And the, the Leeds brickyards weren't in Leeds themselves. They, they were to the, to the east. If you, if you went on 40, if 44th Street could be extended across uh, highway seven, business Highway 75, almost up to the Highway 75 bypass today, uh, kind of up in that area, there's, some how, there's, there's a few houses on what used to be um, 41st Street that connected to Smith River Road. Um, that's about where the Leeds Brick Company was. Uh, and so that, that's where, where these buildings would have been. That, oh, awesome. That's neat. I've never seen that. That's, that, that's a cool thing to have. Because I, I believe that the Leeds Brickyards weren't operative for real long. So uh, not, that's a neat thing. Uh, another picture of the Leeds Brickyard. Uh, you, you see, actually, I'm not, not quite sure there are men and women in some of these photos and kids, and it's possible that some of these kids were, were working at the Brickyards at that time. Another picture of, of the Brickyards. Uh, and so just some, some great early pictures there. Now we get back into Leeds itself, and we have the, uh, uh, the George Geisler Hardware Store uh, at 4025 Floyd Boulevard. Uh, and this is where, approximately where the old Leeds Pharmacy was, uh, south of Polk Street on the, on the west side of, of uh, Floyd Boulevard. Of course, now we get back to Elmwood. So that, if, you, if you can imagine the, uh, the Treadway house that we saw earlier, uh, that's how it looked, or it, kind of as it was originally built in the early 1880s. Well, the, the, the Treadways, their daughter Imogene married Judge Joseph Lawrence, uh, and, and for a while, the Lawrences and uh, John and Elizabeth Treadway all lived in the, in the old uh, uh, Treadway home. Uh, and around 1900, Judge Lawrence and Im Imogene undertook a big renovation project of, of the original house and added this big uh, kind of Greek revival style front uh, with, with ionic columns on the front and, and a, a very fancy roof line to the front of the house is basically what they did. And so, uh, and that's really the point where, where Elmwood became the, a, a real landmark in Sioux City then for many years and, and indeed was, was used it was, over the years. It was, of course, a residence and then it was a nursing nursing home for a while. Uh, at one point it was, it was a restaurant run by the Waite family uh, and, uh, and then was torn down about 1988 or so for a Casey's uh, uh, gas station. <laughs> 
Another big house in, in early Leeds was uh, what originally was the, the Charles Giddings home, who Charles Giddings was the uh, original uh, manager of the Sioux City Engine Ironworks. But at, when this picture was taken in the late 1890s, it was the uh, residence of Charles and Ella Barlow. Uh, and it was at 50, uh, 45th and, uh, let's see, it was at 45th and what today is Springfield Street. Uh, at the, it'd be at the northeast corner. Uh, and we have a picture of the whole uh, Barlow family, plus probably one of the one of the neighbors uh, in, on the, on this pic in this picture. Uh, and it it was unfortunately it, the the uh, the last occupant uh, passed away in, in about 1960. And in 1961, the uh, the Sioux City Fire Department uh, used it as a training exercise and burned it uh, to to use in training. Uh, so it no longer exists and is actually was replaced by a couple of houses in, in the 1970s. It was so big. Here's another picture of the Barlow house. This is uh, Ella and, uh, and uh, Geneva Barlow out in front of the house about 1904, so a few years after that last photo. Now here's a, a fun picture. This is uh, Charles uh, and Elsie Jonas's house, uh, and this house still exists. It's at uh, 40, I think it's 4019 Madison Street, uh, and so it'd be on the west side of, of uh, Madison Street and south of 41st Street. Uh, and this is a picture of Elsie and her, her uh, kids uh, right outside the house. Now today, the, the top of the turret has been taken off, so the, the turret only goes up to about here. Uh, and so the Jonases, of course, uh, as we saw their, their store uh, earlier, they, they continue to be uh, early res residents of Leeds. Uh, here we have the, the, the Rich Brothers coal and uh, business uh, and wood business in, in Leeds. Uh, and uh, it's, this is southwest of where Tom's outboard is, is today. And so this was uh, uh, Wilson and, and Charles Rich uh, ran uh, the Rich Brothers. And here, I've always liked this interior photo. So interior with their, uh, their secretary, Georgia Nesbitt, uh, inside about 1907. And uh, just a, I, to me, that's a very emblematic way a, a typical business would have looked at that time. Now, uh, the, the St. Michael's Parish uh, was established in Leeds in, in 1906. Uh, and the, the church was, was built uh, in, in the, the following year in 1907. Uh, and it's, it was, the church was right where the St. Michael's School is still today at uh, the northeast corner of 41st uh, and Van Buren Streets. Uh, and, but the church building sat about where the, uh, uh, where the playground is for the, for the current school. Here we have Hawthorne School again. Uh, by, by this point, when this picture was taken, I think this was taken about 1909, uh, in 1897 they had added a big bell tower to, to the, the building. And so that's what, that's what you see there. Here's another uh, uh, class at Hawthorne out on the front steps. As you see in these early school buildings, you, you had to walk up into the schools. Uh, those, the, the old school buildings were uh, always made that way. Uh, and I, I would say this is a first or second grade class at, at, at Hawthorne at that time. Probably the principal and the teacher. Uh, can't be sure. They, the, the people weren't identified, unfortunately. Now here's a great view of what Floyd Avenue at that time, wasn't called Floyd Boulevard in those days, uh, would have looked like about 1910, uh, looking toward, uh, we're kind of looking uh, northeast uh, from, from Central Street uh, uh, to, to the northeast, and so you get a sense of what the Leeds Business District looked like. You can see the, the streetcar tracks that served Leeds at that time, uh, but, but Floyd Boulevard was, uh, was, was still a dirt road. It, was, it hadn't been paved at that point in 1910. For a while, Leeds had a had a nice baseball field uh, at the. It, this would be at the if you if you extended Fillmore Street across the railroad tracks and almost to Forty uh, First Street, uh, that the the uh, that baseball field sat on the uh, <clears throat> on on the, what would be the east side of the railroad tracks, and that's where the uh, Leeds Mystics baseball team uh, would have uh, would have uh, uh, would have played and uh, managed by Charles Rich, who we see here, uh, owner or owner operator of uh, Rich Brothers uh, and uh, I, I presume that the Mystics were, were sponsored by Mystic Milling in, in Leeds and so that they, they were their baseball team. 
Uh, here we have Smith's band, which eventually became uh, the, the uh, lead, Leeds band, uh, led by Merritt Smith here in the, in the middle. And I, I like this because we have two of these pictures. And this is, this is, I presume this is their, in their jazz ensemble uh, phase where they're kind of dressed up like a Dixieland uh, band. And then in the next picture, they're in their formal marching band uniforms. And we do have a, one of these uniforms very similar to this in, in our collection. It's a pretty neat thing. This is, I, you know, this is the high point, like if you think of the music man and stuff, uh, little towns and, and uh, areas of towns would have their, their own bands. And so that, uh, that, that I've always loved these pictures. Now here we have uh, uh, the residents of uh, uh, the Stinson, Dr. Stinson, uh, David and his wife Rosa. Uh, and this was at the northwest corner of 45th and, uh, um, gosh, I can't read from here. The center of Grant Street, and uh, this house is still there. It's straight to the east of the, the old uh, Barlow house that we saw earlier. Now here we have a great overview of, of Leeds as it would have looked like in, in 19, uh, 1915, uh, and this was taken from what is usually called Carlin Park, up where the water tower at one time was, probably taken from the water tower, actually. Uh, and it, so you can see all kinds of great things. For instance, when this picture was taken, American popcorn was about a year old, and so it just has a little tiny facility down here at, at, at number two. Uh, you can still see the Mystic Milling right here is located. Uh, way in the distance, this is, this is where Leeds Brick Company would have been. Uh, and then uh, you also see uh, Sioux City Robe and Tanning is off over here. And there's a little bit, the Sioux City Engine and Iron Works would have originally sat here, and there's just a few buildings left from that, co uh, that uh, complex in, in 1915. Now here's another, same, same, basically these are two paired photos. Uh, and so now we're kind of looking to the, to the uh, southwest, and where the trees line, that's Central Street, so that's kind of your main north-south street in, in Leeds. Uh, and you can see things like, uh, here's Hawthorne School and uh, uh, Olivet Church at that time. Uh, in the distance is Wesley Methodist. Uh, and so uh, you can also see the railroad depots, the Great Northern and the Illinois Central. Uh, so another neat picture of, of early Leeds. <coughs> well, now we get to, to Trinity High School. Now, Trinity High School wasn't in Leeds proper, is where Trinity Heights is today, uh, but Trinity was the kind of the first uh, Catholic uh, boys' school in, in uh, Sioux City, and uh, it was designed, the buildings were designed by William Steele, who himself was a, was a devout Catholic, uh, and, uh, uh, and of course, William Steele, designer of the Woodbury County Courthouse, and the probably the most prominent architect in Sioux City's history, uh, and opened in 1913. And it was actually both a, a school and a, a high school and a, a, um, a college for, for many years. And when Healand was created in 1949, it was a merger of Trinity for the boys and uh, Cathedral uh, for, for the girls who were down by the, uh, the Cathedral of the Epith Epiphany. And so uh, that's, Helan basically developed out of, out of uh, Trinity. But what we had here in, in the complex, this was the main school building. And the, the building in the middle, that was uh, uh, the gymnasium and it had a swimming pool. Uh, and then off to the side, this was a dormitory because, as I said before, it was a college. Uh, and also, uh, some of the, even the kids that were going to high school uh, sometimes came from places like Norfolk and farther away. And so they, they would actually stay here in, in uh, Sioux City. If they didn't stay for rel with relatives here, they'd stay in the dormitory. Here we have the Trinity football team in 1919. And, of course, a long tradition of, of, uh, of football in Sioux City, and particularly Trinity and later Helan. So that's a great picture. Of course, this is right exactly the era of, uh, you know, George Gipp and, and Newt Rockney at, at Notre Dame. And so it's right that time. And as a matter of fact, a few of these players actually played at Notre Dame later. And I, I can't tell you which one's offhand, but... Uh, here we have uh, Michael Denise's Rome Theater at 3915 Floyd Avenue in 1923. So Leeds had its own movie theater for a while. Uh, and this is where uh, the Leeds flea market is today. This building is still uh, being used. 
Here we have Frank Gerard's Blacksmith Shop uh, at 4110 Floyd Avenue. Uh, and this has to be, you know, probably the last of the, the it, it, we're getting late in the old uh, style blacksmith's era in, in, in 1920. And so within about 20 years, the, the, the blacksmith's job kind of transitioned into other things like uh, mechanics and, and machine shops and things like that. But uh, uh, here, I, I do like the, this picture, though, of how a, an old blacksmith shop would have looked like at that time. In 1923, Wesley Methodist uh, built a, a brick uh, church building, and this building is still uh, in existence, even though the, the church itself isn't using it. And I'm not sure if it's being used right now, uh, but, uh, but it, it is still standing. Uh, in, in 1921, Albertson and Company, the machine uh, uh, sh shop that specialized in things like valve grinders and sew tools eventually, uh, power tools, uh, moved to just south of Leeds along uh, Floyd Boulevard, right across from Springdale. Uh, and uh, it, it, it had actually started in downtown Sioux City about 1915, but uh, from that time on then until it uh, left Sioux City in the early 2000s was, uh, uh, was, was a major Sioux City business. And so this picture is taken about 1929. And here's an interior view of, of uh, uh, Albertson and Company at that time in their steel hardening room. Another uh, business that got its start in Leeds uh, that later became prominent in Sioux City was what originally was called the Lear Manufacturing Company, uh, but then eventually Kerry Keen, uh, and they specialized in the Kerry Keen Carrier, which was a, a, an aftermarket trunk uh, that you attach to the back of a car, and if you think of a, a 1920s or early 1930s cars, didn't have built-in trunks, and so you bought this and attached it, and so you could haul groceries or you could haul your your uh, your luggage in the back, and so that, that's what, and this became a very big business. They, they started out operating in Leeds in some of the old buildings of the Sioux City Engine and Iron Works, and then in the, in the late 20s moved down to 7th and Division Streets where uh, um, the Sioux City Foundry is today and, and operated on a much larger scale. So this is pretty early in its, in its history. And here's an interior view of the, the production of, of uh, Kerry Keen carriers at that time. Now uh, here, this is a 1928 view of American popcorn, and by that point, uh, American popcorn was getting uh, quite a bit bigger, and so uh, it, uh, you know, we have some enlarged facilities. I, I believe by this time, uh, American popcorn had started uh, packaging uh, popcorn in its uh, in the cardboard containers. They they actually contracted with a uh, a beer can manufacturer in Chicago to create the the, and they were they were really leaders in the, in that in the popcorn field in that kind of packaging, and became very very successful as a result of that. Now here we have uh, what had been the, the Mystic Milling or the Bonus Milner Mill uh, taken over by International Milling, which is one of the biggest mills in the world, uh, headquartered up in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, but International Milling greatly expanded what, uh, what had been Mystic Milling. And you can still see the old mill part, uh, building right here, but in the 1920s they added these big silos and just greatly expanded the overall milling uh, operation. Now here we have a picture of Harry uh, Siegschlag, the grocery store, and what I love about this, not only do you have him loading groceries, but he's loading it into a Kerry Keen carrier on the back of this, about it, back of this car, so I, that's, a, that's a nice coincidence. For a little while, Leeds had its own airport, and this was linked to the Kerry Keene Company as well. Uh, in the late 1920s, Kerry Keene was looking for ways to diversify its business and decided to get into the aircraft manufacturing business. Uh, and uh, we do have here in the museum a, a Kerry Keene airplane, which there are only about 30 ever made. Uh, but it, it, to sell their, their airplanes, they operated an airport briefly out in Leeds. Uh, roughly on the kind of the eastern edge of what today would be Magellan Pipeline Company along uh, Highway 75. And so they had, a, they had a, uh, a, uh, uh, a hangar out there, and then they would offer uh, flying lessons to people that bought Kerry Keene airplanes was the idea. Uh, and this only operated for a little while. The, the Kerry Keene uh, Airplane Company, uh, a, a person was killed in a crash uh, testing a Kerry Keene uh, airplane in 1930, 1931, uh, and there was a lawsuit, and the, the company ended up dissolving between the Great Depression and that lawsuit, and so the, 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 the airplane manufacturing wing just kind of went away, uh, but this, uh, this hangar building then was moved out to uh, Graham Field in North Sioux City and was used out there. I, I don't think it's out there anymore, but, uh, but it was out there for many years. 
And here we have a picture of an air show on the uh, on the uh, Kerry Keene or the Leeds Airport grounds, and we're kind of looking back toward Leeds itself from the airport. Uh, here's a great picture of Wallace Garage, uh, south corner of Floyd Boulevard and Fillmore Street, uh, owned by Joseph Wallace, and obviously he distributed Goodyear products. And I, I'm not sure what this giant tire, I, whether it was from a, a very large airplane or maybe some kind of huge truck, even at that time, uh, but uh, but it was some kind of Goodyear promotional thing that was going on uh, of giant uh, products that they made. There's also a, a little white cat down here under the under the, the car. Never <laughs> notice. <laughs> Here's Tommy's uh, Sinclair gas station, which is at the site of the old Leeds car wash uh, uh, at uh, uh, Floyd Boulevard and Grant Street. Uh, and so this is just one of the neat little 1920s, 1930s uh, gas stations they had owned by uh, Clarence Thompson. Uh, and uh, that, you know, just had the, the cool pumps and, and things that they had at that time. Uh, now here we're back to Hawthorne School. In, in, the, in the early 1930s, the Sioux City, actually starting in the late 20s, uh, the Sioux City School District uh, started, was able to get uh, uh, federal funds to renovate the old school buildings in Sioux City. And what they basically did was bring them up to modern standards to make them like schools that were built in the 1920s, early 1930s. And so they did things like lower the main uh, entrance to ground level, uh, and they took away things like the bell towers and, and uh, uh, put new windows in, put, you know, they expanded bathroom facilities, things like that. And so uh, the, a lot of the old uh, buildings or school buildings in, in Sioux City that had been built in the 1880s, 1890s uh, were, were extensively renovated in, in, in the, the uh, 1930s and were used then until very recently. Uh, and, and many still stand and are being used. And here we have, uh, I believe it's Evelyn Ring's uh, fifth grade class in 1939. So nice picture of some Hawthorne School students uh, from, from the late 30s. Here we have a Leeds baseball team. This, this time it's the Leeds Red Sox, and Charles Rich is still managing them evidently uh, in, in the 1930s. So a good picture of that. Here we have the, the Leeds Garage. Uh, the Leeds Garage sat right next to, um, let's see, where was it? It was, at, uh, uh, it was at the east corner of Floyd Boulevard and Tyler Street. So it was basically where the, uh, um, where the uh, Shell gas station is today in, in, in Leeds uh, and owned by Paul Kistner. Uh, a new, uh, the, 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 what I call the current, it's not the current uh, Leeds fire station, but it's the, it's the fire station building that uh, uh, was used until the, the early 1980s. Uh, and it was, it was, this is the groundbreaking in, in 1936 uh, to replace that 1892 fire, fire station. So we have the various dignitaries here. For instance, this is George Kellogg, who was the fire chief in, in Sioux City and uh, was to retire a few years after that, after being fire chief for 50 years. And so this is a, and it has other dignitaries like Gordon Holler, who was the, the uh, commissioner of public safety at that time and, and others. And here we have the, the picture of the completed uh, fire station building. I uh, always liked this this building, one of the one of the neater fire stations Sioux City has had over time, I think. Of course, now we get to Leeds High School. So uh, until 1939, Leeds High School students after the eighth grade, oh uh, well, so beginning uh, beginning in the late 1910s, early 1920s, the the Sioux City School District built the first junior high schools. So starting with Leeds High School or uh, East High School or Junior High, and then eventually North Junior High and Woodrow Wilson Junior High. And so a lot, Leeds uh, Junior High students would have to go to Woodrow Wilson was kind of the closest, and high school students had to go to Central High School. Well, that's like five miles away from the center of Leeds, and so that, that, and, and this is a time before there really was busing to to areas and so that's uh, you know when it's 10 degrees in the middle of winter and you know five miles to and from school that's that's quite an ask and so it, it uh, the, the residents of Leeds really felt like uh, it discouraged Leeds students from going on to high school in particular because it was so hard to to get to school and go to you know do activities and stuff and so there was a referendum in Leeds uh, and uh, the result was the construction of Leeds High School uh, which opened in September of, of 1939 at uh, 40th and Jefferson Streets 
Uh, and so from that point on until 1972, Leeds had its own high school. And it, it was in size, uh, you know, 200 to 300 students probably. Uh, and so, you know, it, instead of being like directly competing with Central and East High, uh, a lot of times played uh, smaller schools like uh, South Sioux City, of course, eventually R Riverside High School, uh, Akron, West uh, Akron High School at that time, uh, Yankton High School. Uh, and so uh, that, that's kind of the, the equivalent to what it was. And it, it really, I think, it, apart from being, uh, in, in my, at least my theory is, of one of the reasons Leeds has such a strong uh, neighborhood identity is because of the high school. I think that that was just a, a big part of, of this, this kind of separate identity that Leeds developed over time. Here we have a great picture of the uh, Jepson transportation trucks uh, lined up uh, along Floyd Boulevard uh, with George Jepson, the owner, and, and uh, one of his mechanics in the, in the picture. Uh, so this would be the north corner of Floyd Boulevard and Fillmore Streets. I, I threw this picture in just because this is down by where Elmwood was sat. Uh, we're just probably to the to the north of, of Elmwood. And so this this area, so you're on Floyd uh, Floyd Boulevard right before you get to Outer Belt Drive today. And it, this area has just changed so much looking to, to the south. You know, it almost looks like you're in uh, an isolated country area in, in this picture in the 19, early 1940s. Yeah, here we have the Leeds High School, Leeds Leader newspaper staff uh, in, in uh, 1945. We have the Leeds basketball team, and coached by Lowell Crippen, who is a pretty legendary Leeds uh, High School coach of uh, basketball, football, really all the sports, I think. Uh, and uh, it was, it was uh, just a, a well-known figure in, in Leeds for many, many years. Here we have the 1946 uh, Leeds High School football team, which were the Tri-State Conference champions. And, and Leeds had many very good football teams uh, in the 1940s through the 1960s. Uh, and so, uh, great picture here. I, I love, you know, as a, I'm a big football fan, and this is a great example of the T formation, which was, it was brand new at that time, and the way they're lined up. And so, that, that's pretty awesome. Here we have the Leeds High School homecoming parade in 1948 going down uh, Floyd, Floyd Boulevard. So we have the marching band and you can see the, uh, a lot of the, the letter sweaters and stuff in the distance. Great photo. Right after World War II, what was originally Great Lakes Pipeline that was built to Leeds. And so this is the development of what today is Magellan Pipeline, where pretty much all of our areas, gasoline and propane and things are, are uh, diesel fuel, all that stuff is, is pipeline to Sioux City uh, and then transported around. Uh, and so th this is very early in the development of that. In 1947, the International Milling Company had a terrible fire, and a big, uh, a big portion of its uh, uh, of its structures were, were burned down. And so this is in the aftermath of, of, of the fire, while the, the fire department is still fighting the the blaze. And from that point on, it was more of a it was it was more of a, a grain elevator, and the, the milling part uh, was phased out. Here we have a great picture of the Leeds Business District in, in uh, 1947. We still have the streetcars uh, uh, in, in this view. Uh, you actually have a lot of neat things. So you, had, you have uh, the Leeds Garage here. Uh, you have Burke Lumber to, to the north. You have the Leeds Fire Station, uh, Wilkins Drug on the corner. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just, and this is one year before uh, the, the streetcars were phased out in Sioux City. So it's right at the end of that era. Another good streetcar picture. This is where the streetcar turned around at uh, uh, Arthur Streets. Uh, and the, the little house that's uh, in this picture still, still sits there in the corner of Arthur Street and uh, Floyd Boulevard. Uh, and so that was the turnaround where you'd turn around and head back toward downtown. Another great view of the, uh, the business district in, in the, the early 1950s. Uh, you got the Council Grocery Store at, at 41st and Floyd Boulevard. And uh, I believe you can see, uh, the, well, you can see Leeds Hardware and uh, Wags Hut in the distance. And uh, so just uh, some pretty iconic Leeds businesses. Well, it's probably not exactly 1950. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Fine. Uh, the Avenue Garage, uh, this building still, still exists uh, 
um, along Floyd Boulevard. So another lot of lot of automobile related businesses leads over the years. That, that definitely sticks out. Here we have uh, what had been the Robin Tanning Company after it became Sioux City Fur. Uh, and it's kind of interesting how the grounds had developed. The, the old building was still there, but they kind of developed a little fountain and stuff out front, and that, that's a pretty neat view. In, <clears throat> in 1935, Calvary Lutheran Church took over what had been Olivet Presbyterian Church uh, at, at 44th and Central Streets. And then the, the, the uh, current building that's still being used uh, it was built in, in the 1950s uh, that you see here. Now, Leeds was struck by the second uh, really terrible Floyd River flood in 1953. Uh, and so this is a, an overview of, from Leeds of, of that flood in, in June of 1953. And you can just see, you know, all the really a good portion of the, uh, the business district and all of the industrial district of Leeds was, was, was uh, submerged during that flood. Here we have a great photo from uh, the Highway 75 bridge looking back to the, to the southwest along the railroad tracks. And so you can see the, the houses along Floyd Boulevard here and, and of course, the, the international milling in the, in the distance in American popcorn. And here we're right down in the, in the, the business district, uh, kind of where we saw a few, uh, few pictures earlier, uh, completely underwater. So you get a sense of just the, the, the level of, of damage that was done during this flood. Another up close part of, of the part of the business district between 41st Street and Tyler Street. This is down in uh, Springdale. So, uh, and this is at the 28th Street Bridge as it was then. And Springdale was hit even worse than, than Leeds because Springdale was right along the river. And uh, in fact, my, one of my grandmothers and her family lived in Springdale and they had to, her dad had to cut a hole in the roof and go out through the roof. It came down on them so hard and uh, be carried away by a boat. And so this is Springdale after, kind of in the aftermath of the flood standing on the, there, there were dikes at that time around Springdale, but they were completely insufficient for this flood. So here we have the aftermath of the flood and the, the cleanup, you know, uh, uh, you know, all floods are, the, the cleanup's just the worst thing. Uh, now, 14 people did die in the, in the 1953 flood, so that was the worst thing, but then the, the, the damage was just really, really extensive. And it led directly to the Floyd River Flood Control Project that was carried out by the Army Corps engineers in the early 1960s. Here we have a picture of Albertson and Company uh, in, the, in the 1950s, uh, an overview of the complex. You can kind of see how the, uh, uh, how the facilities had expanded. Uh, you can still see that this is the Springdale footbridge that went over to, uh, to Albertson and Company. Here we have the Stussy Standard uh, service station, and this was at uh, the, where uh, the Leeds Beauty Parlor is today. Uh, so that was a, 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 a gas station initially, and for many years thereafter. And later, what had been the the, uh, um, the Leeds Garage became uh, Dan Kelly's Conoco Station. So where where the uh, um, the Shell gas station is today at uh, uh, Tyler and, and uh, Floyd, Floyd Boulevard. And here's a great aerial uh, looking toward Leeds and Springdale and Leeds uh, in, in 1958. And this was taken by the Army Corps engineers as they were preparing to uh, do the, the Floyd River flood control project. So before they built the big dikes along the, along the river. And so you can see here's, here is uh, Springdale here. Trinity Heights is up in here, Albertson and Company, and then Leeds in the, district, in the, in the distance. There was one more Floyd River flood while the uh, flood control project was going on in March of 1962. And so here we ha we're at the 28th Street Bridge going over to Springdale again uh, with Albertson and company in the distance. And at that time, uh, uh, National Guard uh, personnel were sent out to place sandbags uh, in the Springdale area. And so that's what they're doing. That's the Springdale footbridge in, in the distance there. And then here you kind of get the extent of that flood. The 1962 flood was a snow melt flood as opposed to a flash flood like the 1892 and 1953 floods were. So there was no loss of life, but it, it was a fairly damaging flood. 
then here we have uh, Floyd Boulevard Wesleyan Church uh, uh, at the very end of, of Floyd Boulevard on the uh, in uh, at the very northeastern end of of, uh, of Leeds. Uh, and today it is uh, Palabra de Vita Wesleyan Church, uh, and so it's still still being used as as a Wesleyan Church building. Now here we have a great picture of of uh, Leeds students taking. Basically, the Iowa te Iowa educational assessments, and the, this is interesting because my uh, my middle school son was j just taking these very same tests here the last few days, <laughs> and so some things never change. But this is 1967. Now, here we have the Leeds High twirlers and marching band uh, after during a football game, I'm sure, at uh, around 1970. Uh, and, and Leeds, of course, had its own football field and and its own facilities that way. And then, unfortunately, my, my last photo is of the, the Bartlett grain explosion. So what had been international milling uh, became Bartlett grain in the 1950s, I believe. Uh, and there was a, it, the, the explosion in 1974, it was, it was a dust uh, explosion, and it killed four workers uh, and injured one. And so this is in the aftermath. And you kind of get the sense of how it just blew the top off of the, the elevator uh, building in, in the background. Uh, and so that was, that was really one of the very worst uh, accidents in, in Sioux City's industrial history, but, uh, but certainly in Leeds. <laughs> 